Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is an interesting day. Devstream 173 just went live, which came with many announcements, including Hydroids rework, companion reworks, new player path adjustments, HUD, and just quality of life improvements, and system changes. So, we're currently on our subathon, which makes it very, very difficult for me to edit videos. But hey, hooray for us, two year anniversary on Twitch. Anyways, we're going to go look at my thoughts on the Companion Rework Part 1 today and tell you all about it. If you miss it from the dev stream, this is very, very live. In fact, we're recording this while on stream. So I apologize in advance. This is not a highly edited video. If you're looking for examples, things and whatnot, we're not going to have it. But this is essentially a full breakdown on the important bits of the Companion Rework that are coming from what we know so far. So... As we know, the Companion Rework is supposed to arrive sometime this year, maybe in October 18th. I don't know if that's con confirmed yet or not, because this is only part one of two, so there's still more to show, so it might not be done then. But the main thing that they wanted to accomplish was one, make Companions tankier and less annoying to deal with, so that, well, they don't have permadeath, essentially, and more interactive gameplay with your Companion, so that... Well, I can do more. What this means is very, very vague, but I'll get into what they've showed us so far. Also, removing redundant mods or improving them so that they add more into the picture. So the first topic that we're going to go over is companions no longer die permanently now. So sentinels, when they run out of lives, they're gone forever. And aside from the vulpophilus for your pets, if you do not revive them before they bleed out, they're also dead for the rest of the mission. This is no longer going to be happening. So essentially, whenever they run out of health, they kind of go into this incapacitated state, base 60 seconds. Now, there are ways to reduce this, and it varies depending on whether or not you're using Sentinel, MOA, or, well, an animal pet. So we'll get into that later onwards. Vulpophilers are getting no bonus out of this. This is probably because they're just already too strong. So they're just still working as they always did when they become a Sentinel. Blah, blah, blah. Nothing else important going on there. Uh, the pet stat changes, none of this is honestly that important. All you need to know is overall, pets are roughly twice as tanky as they used to be before accounting for mod skilling, all that type of stuff, but they're just twice as strong. So another thing that's being changed is the link health mods in the past could heal your companion with certain abilities. So they would basically heal it by proxy when you get healed and a certain amount would bleed over to them. This is getting removed. The main reason for this is because the companions were being treated as operatives or defense objectives when this happened, which could cause odd scaling or unusual interactions. So that is gone, but instead it's not all bad. Companions are essentially now being treated the exact same as Warframes. So anything that could heal you before should now also be able to heal them. This means anything on this list, when you cast your heal through whatever how you implement it, it will also affect them directly. So yeah, good to know. Or damage reduction, I guess Eclipse, yada yada. But you get the point of you and your companion are now one and the same. So, for existing mod changes, uh, most of these are not that important. I'm only going to go over the ones that matter. Regen is taking prominence now because normally you would only really consider bringing a Sentinel into a shorter mission as they can permanently die. They don't bring as much to the table, but there are certain interactions moving forward that will make them rather more desirable. But the most important part is Regen now cuts their base 60 revive duration down to 40 or removing 20 seconds and 6 seconds of iframes. Yeah, yeah, we already knew that. Primed regen does even more, and this is something that your pets do not have. They go from 60 and remove 35, so now only 25 seconds until they revive. 25 is quite quick. I know we still have stuff like uh, Proteas, I think it was Proteas Augment or Hard Reset Parazon Mod, but I'll get into that discussion a little bit later. In comparison, companions do not have an equivalent. The most that they have on your animal pets, I believe there was a, there should be a Medi, Medi Pet Kit here. 
it cuts 15 seconds off. So your Kubro, your Kavat, your Smita, that type of stuff, your... Uh, well, you know, Predazites, it's 15 seconds less, so base 45. You're still going to be using this. Almost all the mods are still there. But another new one that is interesting is Accelerated Deflection. Just like on your Warframes on the Shield Gating discussion, which will be a separate video, this is now being changed to Shield Recharge Delay. So instead of recharging shields faster when they start recharging, the amount of time that's required until they begin recharging is less. This is an important mod because, well, the more shield damage your companion takes, the less health damage they're taking, meaning they're less likely to die. Therefore, reducing the amount of time it takes before shields begin to recharge is always handy. So now this is going to find its way into every build. Also, companions now have all of the shield gate that we have that we'll be getting in the rework that's coming in on October 18th. And here's another one. Jin's Reawaken. This is very interesting. So I'm not sure if DE really realized what they did here. But as we know, with Primed Regen... The incapacitate time for Sentinels is only down to 25 seconds. Now, Reawaken basically works so that for every energy orb you pick up, it shaves off an extra 6 seconds, which means if you pick up 3 to 4 orbs, well, the revive timer is basically completely nullified and Jin is back. So this is actually pretty convenient. And there's a couple of interesting synergies for this later on, which that we can discuss. So stay tuned for that, but... Jin is really, really good now. This is a pretty strong mod buff. Pack Leader has been nerfed. If you want to use Pack Leader to heal on melee, you're going to be using Primed Pack Leader now, because in the past we do tens, thousands, millions of damage and a single hit would heal the full, so even an unranked Pack Leader would still be enough, and maybe two or three hits would tap you out, otherwise a maxed ranked normal one would be full health in one hit. But now it's 50 HP per hit on the enemy. So if you want a good amount restored, you're gonna be using the Prime version for 92, as well as companions now being able to receive Overshield and Overguard. The Overguard cap from the Prime demand is 1100 instead of 600. So yeah, if you're playing melee play style, you just have to upgrade up to this one and just be aware you can't heal them instantly. But while well, melees are fast and you can hit multiple enemies per swing, so that's not that much of an issue. Uh, the Sanctuary and Shelter changes don't really matter that much because usually if these are getting destroyed, they get broken very, very quickly on Steel Path. So tripling their health isn't going to change too much. It's kind of a very narrow window one where this really matters. So if you chose to use this, you're not going to notice much of a difference. Self-Destruct, nothing nothing mattered there. Okay, so Loyal Companion is now a garbage mod. We, we don't use it anymore. When you're playing a Warframe on Steel Path, you're either health tanking, which means you heal faster than you take damage, or you're shield gating, meaning you don't want to take health damage because you're going to explode. So instead of giving them a 10 times longer bleed out link, instead of affecting their incapacitation time, your companion now taunts enemies to draw fire for itself for 30 seconds if you're below 35% health and a 60 second cooldown. Why would you want this? All it does is get your pet killed. If you're on shield gating build, you're not going to be under 35% health. You're just going to die. If you're on a health tank build, you shouldn't be under 35%. But even if you're under 35%, it's not hard to heal up. You're on a health tanking build. So the only purpose of this mod is get your companion killed. Therefore, this mod has become useless. Hard reset is a huge buff now. Three mercy kills in 40 seconds used to instant revive. Could be a bit difficult, could be a little bit annoying, but now it's just by the mercy. So each one shapes 10 seconds off. And if it's a companion, well, 25 seconds. Two mercies should easily get them all the way back up. If you're using a pet, three to four mercies should be enough to get them all the way back up. And pretty convenient because with the second more light Eximus rework, they made it so Eximus spawn cap now is at maximum after one minute instead of five minutes. So, well, just a comfy improvement. Plus, it's a Parazon mod, so you don't really need to worry about it as much. Fired up, uh, this is almost entirely cosmetic change. There's very, very, very few situations where this actually matters. You're going to use this the exact same as ways before. Don't worry about it. Spare parts, okay, so now you can't intentionally blow up your Sentinel every 5-10 seconds. It's 15 seconds now. Every 15 seconds, they mark an enemy. If you kill them, you get rare loot. Just simple as that. And now, because there's no longer a life limit... You don't have to abort super quick in the Zeramintasa to get your Lanthorns and reset to get more since, uh, well, Sentinel lives. So now I can just go through the mission like normal at a slower pace, letting them scan an enemy every 15 seconds to get 
your rare loot. That's it. For the next part, we have our new companion mod. So we have this time stamped in the dev stream, courtesy of one of uh, our chatters that helped us out to grab this. We have duplex bond, tenacious bond, reinforced bond, and aerial bond. First, I'm gonna go over duplex bond. This mod is kind of stupid and not that useful on Kubros, Kavats, Predazites, Volpophilos. Why? Because their AI is supremely dumb. And the only way you're going to be able to spam enough 100 energy expenses to get a decent amount of clothes consistently is if you're on a health tank build. Shieldgate builds like to use energy to survive, but burning 100 energy quickly is quite a bit more to ask for. So unless they're running Nourish or say like at Sunt or whatnot, that's going to be a bit rare. But the important thing about this is that Kubros and Kavats and the, their archetypes, they're stupid. So they will get kills, but it's very slow. Expect like a kill every, what, 10 seconds? It's a 50% chance. So maybe about every 10 seconds, you'll get one energy orb, which is decent. It's not nothing, but do keep in mind, if your companion is able to get a kill every 10 to 20 seconds, two of them in 20, you might want to consider whether or not you have problems landing kills. And if you're blowing everything up, they have nothing to kill. So don't expect this to help that much for them. On the flip side, this helps a lot with Sentinels and Moas because Sentinels and Moas can use specific weapons. And in particular, the Verglass weapon that came with Nautilus in the Railjack update is the strongest Sentinel weapon that exists. It's basically the Glaxon as a weapon. It annihilates enemies with half decent modding, say like Viral Heat. Fired Up helps it too because that's an extra heat mod that you slot onto your, well, Sentinel or MOA instead of the weapon itself. So cool, free extra damage. But essentially this thing deletes enemies. So because it does that, it's a good source of energy orbs. Way, way better than your Panzer Kavats, uh, Kubro, Predazite. You get the spiel. So you might have known in the past that people like to use Viral Quills with Panzer Volpophila or Death Cube with its unique precept to get more energy. Well, now you can use Duplex Bond on any MOA or Sentinel with Verglass and get a very similar effect with good amount of spawns. But there's a very unique interaction on this that I mentioned a bit earlier to stay tuned for. If you look at Sentinels, they have primed regen to remove 35 seconds from the respawn, so it's only 25 instead of 60. And Jin has a reawaken mod that reduces the incapacitation by six seconds out of the 25 every single time you pick an energy orb up. Jin is a sentinel. Jin can equip Verglass. Verglass deletes enemies, but you have to use assault mode for this. Using assault mode and deleting enemies draws aggro to your sentinel. Your sentinel is thus more likely to die. But if Jin dies, Every energy orb you pick up from Reawaken shaves six seconds off the timer. Now, if Jin has Verglass, Jin is going to be deleting things left and right with Duplex Bond, meaning there's going to be energy orbs, honestly, like all over the place. So, at a base 25 seconds revive timer due to primed regen, you only really need four orbs to revive your Jin instantly. And with Verglass and Duplex, I can bet you you're gonna having four energy orbs around you. So I'm not exactly too sure if DE realized what they did with this, but Jin basically has zero downtime now in anything that's not endurance. Or if it's endurance, if you bring AOE armor strip too, because Verglass deletes everything. So a Sentinel that effectively never dies in practice because it instantly revives afterwards. So Duplex Bond is so good. You're gonna be using this on every single MOA and Sentinel that you bring into combat. And if you want to and considering it, you could put it on your Kubro, Vizier, uh, your Predazites, your Kavats, Volpofa, I don't know. But it's a bit more mixed for them. Now the next one, Tenacious Bond. Armor Strip is super duper easy to source these days and we have some weapons that are extremely good at landing headshot kills. So you're gonna fit this onto pretty much every single companion build just by the fact that headshot kills cut off three seconds from the revive timer, which is extremely beneficial. 
and that alone is already enough to justify. But you have the second half of the effect. Companion's critical chance above 50%, then you gain 60% critical damage. Well... Sentinel weapons exist for MOAs and Sentinels, and you can mod crit on them so that they pass 50%. And Kubros and Kabats have a crit chance mod, so they can also pass 50% crit. Why does this matter? Because a typical weapon on your loadout has about plus 100 to plus 200% critical damage from mods on them. Meaning if you crit, you have 200 to 300% scaling. If you add 60% critical damage as a mod effect, that is somewhere between 20 to 30% total damage increase from your weapon. And for a mod, this mod, that is a companion mod and does not use up mod slots on your weapon or your Warframe, that is an absolute win. That is a huge damage bump for effectively zero mod slots on your DPS-related gear. Therefore, that is also worth it. So this is a two-in-one deal. You have a very easy to activate way to shave off time from your revive on your companion, and also a very significant and noticeable damage buff for your weapons. So Tenacious Bond is going to be on every single companion moving forwards. Reinforced Bond is the next one. Now we don't have that many ways to get shields back on our companions. I think there was a couple on the reworked mod list, but this is your main way from reloads. Uh, because this is a 60% fire rate buff, it's basically free if you could squeeze this on. I would honestly recommend doing so because, well, it, it just, it's 60% free fire rates. And it's not too hard to meet the requirements. It's not brain dead easy like Tenacious Bond or Duplex. But I wouldn't say it's super hard to activate this. So I would recommend equipping this if you are using weapons that would benefit from having that fire rate buff. Uh, if I go and look at the Abyss of Dagath here and look up shield here. This is another big win for Jin. Jin also gets overshield for every collected orb. And that applies to reinforce bond. So, if you're a Jin enthusiast, not only do you get Giga Revives from Duplex Bond, but you now also get a ton of free fire rate at a pretty decent consistency and uptime too. So yeah, there is that. Otherwise, I don't think that there are any other mods that give an easy amount of consistent shield generation, but remember Accelerated Deflection is being changed to the minus 45% shield recharge delay, which helps both with survivability, but maybe you have a good chance of activating this too. Decent amount of shields and then reloading to stack over shields. Now, Aerial Bond is a kind of finicky, interesting one. It's a bit more niche, but it's not hard to get aerial kills. That's three seconds off, so if all you care about is reviving, then it's just as effective as this. You don't need to get the headshots, you don't need armor strip to get consistently get those. Just kills while you're in the air. And if you get a headshot kill, well, that's 9 seconds off while you're in the air. If you, com if you combine these two, that's 12 seconds. But 9 seconds is probably already enough. The reason why I say this is a bit niche is... Not everybody likes killing stuff in the air. It's not too hard to do, but you have to actually kind of think about it or suit certain play styles. And the second effect of this mod, going back to what I said before, your pet AI is stupid and dumb. Sentinels are stuck to your shoulder. Movement speed, it's not gonna change them. Attack speed, I don't know if that's gonna affect their fire rate or not, that remains to be seen. But for Kuvbros, Predazites, Kavats, Volpophylas, they follow you, and when they're too far away, they teleport. So honestly, that movement speed does not really matter. And because they are dumb, the attack speed of the animal companions, that's also not really going to drastically change because they you basically have to wait for them to attack an enemy, make sure they attack a weak enemy, make sure they have enough damage to kill said enemy, yada yada. So I would say this mod is more niche, but still relevant and useful. This is a pretty popular mod and probably an obvious choice on Jin. This is basically a mandatory mod and honestly borderline OP for Jin because it gives it 100% uptime. 
This is the mod you're gonna put on every single companion because this is your main easy way to revive and a main easy way to get extra 20 to 30% total damage on your guns. So that's what I would say to sum up the rework from what we know from part one so far. There is more to be seen as they work more on the companions moving forwards. I honestly don't think it's going to be ready in time for October 18th, but only time can tell. Hopefully this information has also been useful for you. I do apologize once again. I do know this is in a raw format, but we are pretty much streaming forever into the future for the next, well, several days to weeks. So it's a bit more difficult for me to go and do this. And well, if you wanted more kind of Fireside style breakdown on what's going on in the updates and the dev streams, this is it. I appreciate all of you for tuning in as always. I'm going to try my best to add timestamps in and be as accurate as possible. Since as you know, this is unscripted. But as I always say, 79.5% of you are not subscribed. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? Thank you all for watching. It's much appreciated. A like and subscribe goes a long way to helping the channel. And I will see you all next time.